21 through 25. I pray that it's going to be a blessing to someone on this morning as the Lord moves in the midst of his people. The gospel for the St. Matthew chapter 2. And once again, I ask that you stand in reverence to the word of God, his, his presence in his word. For the word of God says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. Gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 2, beginning at verse 21. And she will bring forth a son, and you shall call him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call him Emmanuel which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her till she had brought forth her firstborn son and they called his name Jesus. And they called his name Jesus. If you will allow, that the Lord will empower and the Holy Spirit will direct. I want to minister to you. I want to preach to you from this thought on this morning in the form of a question. Why did Jesus really come? Why did Jesus really come? You may be seen in the presence of the Lord. Almighty and Almighty God, creator and maker of all things, you who sit high and look below, you who right now, even right now, Lord, your eyes are in every place beholding the evil and the good. You whose very presence is with your people on this, the Lord's day, the time of coming together of the people who have been bought with the blood of your son, Jesus, the church. We thank you for all who have gathered, all who gather, and all who listen upon we ask now, O oh Lord, that you will send the gifting that makes preaching easy. Lord, we ask right now that you will bless the ears about to hear, bless the hearts about to receive. Lord, that this may the very words of my mouth and the very meditations, the thoughts of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You who are my Savior, you who are my Redeemer, you who are my strength, you who are my soon clean king. In the blessed name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Why did Jesus really come? As I was listening to, at the beginning of the service, as I was in the outer court of the sanctuary, and I heard the worship leader uh, declare concerning the season in which we live, this time uh, where men have... Uh, Decreed that this time of year uh, we would celebrate a day which we call Christmas. And as we have matriculated over the years of our life, and we have experienced and we have seen many different things over that course of our life, we have realized and seen that this season has taken on a different connotation, a different meaning. We have find for those of us who are well on in age, amen, that looking at our youth and even comparing it to the time today, something has been left out. Something is missing. The power of the season that used to bring joy, the power of the season that used to bring hope has somehow been stripped away from the very thought and the very purpose for which it was intended. To understand the beginning of Christmas, would you have to go back centuries, amen, uh, to an event that was taking place in another part of the world across the seas from this United States in which we live, amen, there in the midst of the countries of Europe, there was a time uh, of celebration called the Winter Solstice. Amen. And in that Winter Solstice, it was a time in which the men and the women of the, of the time came together and they would celebrate, amen, that they had come through a great harvest and they would celebrate the, the, the wind and they would celebrate the rain and they would celebrate the sun. They would celebrate the elements of the earth, believing that these things brought forth to them 
a harvest, a bounty, a good time. But they fail to understand that everything that humanity receives in life comes from God. The Bible says in Genesis that in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. One little translation says in the first place you must understand that nothing began without God. And that because nothing began without God, all of humanity's worship, all of humanity's praise should be directed upwardly toward God. But being a fallen creature, as we have seen in the word of God, when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden of Eden, they were separated from God. They were separated from intimate fellowship with God because of sin. And sin has worked its work in humanity throughout the generations of our life. The Apostle Paul writes to the church at Rome, amen, in Romans chapter 6, he says there in verse 23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. No matter how good you are, think you we are, no matter how good man think that they are, the great things that we believe that we do, the honorable things that we believe that we do, we are born in a sinful nature. Yeah. We are born separated from the very presence of God. Even though he has allowed us to come into this world, even though he has allowed us to breathe life and to become a living soul, sin separates us from God. Amen. Yet God had already worked out a plan of redemption to man long before you and I came upon the earth. Yeah. We must get away from the idea that we are inherently just good people. Amen. Jesus said there is none good but the Father. Amen. But the Bible also says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, I believe, amen, that we are the workmanship of his hand through Christ Jesus, yes. created unto good works. Because we have been saved, because we have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus, we are saved to do good. We should have a mind to do that which is pleasing in the eyes of the Lord. But why did Jesus really come? In this season, we remember the account of the birth of Jesus there in Matthew, uh, the gospel according to St. Matthew in chapter 2. Matthew records this account of the birth of Jesus. He allows us to see there in verse uh, 18, he says, Now the birth of Christ was as follows, or it happened like this. After his mother Mary was betrothed, betrothed or engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Before they came together in the natural act of a man and woman coming together to conceive and bring forth a child, the Bible says this young virgin named Mary was with child. She was pregnant by the Holy Ghost. Do not think that that is vulgar or do not think that is blasphemous to say that she was born uh, uh, she bore a child of the Holy Ghost. Because when you look at the way that Jesus came into the world, you must once again return to Genesis. For the Bible tells us that before life existed upon the earth, the earth was dark and void. And it says the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the water. And God said, let there be light. Amen. And if we read that account in Genesis, we follow then the chronological order of how God created everything that we take for granted and that become normal in our life today. We see how he created the heavens and the earth. We create, see how he raised up the mountains and created the seas. We see these things. And because they have existed for all these eons and all these thousands of years, too many times we as humans take for granted that it always is and it always will be. Amen. But nothing begins without God. Amen. So here, it is not strange, it is not uncommon that Mary, who was created and brought into life by God, that his spirit can move upon his creation and bring forth life. Since then, Joseph, her husband, being a just man, 
the, the Bible also says, being an upright man, not wanting to make a public example of her, not being like it, it was today if a woman was found with a child, amen, and a man didn't understand, the first thing he would try to do is put her before the public and to make her ashamed. But the Bible says Job was a just man. He didn't understand what was going on, but he understood that he loved Mary and that he wanted her to be his wife. He didn't understand, but he said, I'm not going to do this to her because it would bring a greater shame upon her to do something publicly to her. So he was going to put her away. He was not going to marry her. He was going to silently and secretly allow her to walk away with the child so that there would be no shame upon her. But the Bible says why he thought about these things. It said an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. Saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife. For that which she bears is conceived of the Holy Spirit. That child that is forming in her womb has been put there by God himself. You must understand there is a purpose for what God does in everything that he does. Amen. And it says and she shall bring forth a son and you shall call his name Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. And because we have become so conditioned, because we have become so familiarized, because we have become so used to what we call the Christmas story, if we so rarely always want to go back to this moment where we find Jesus in the manger, where we find him wrapped in swaddling clothes, because in truth, when you look upon the face of a baby or a small child, that is something beautiful and lovely to behold. There is just something about a baby when it is born that we, we just are drawn to it. So naturally, as humans, in the instincts that we have, we are constantly drawn to this moment, amen, in the life of Jesus when he is born there in that manger. But just like so many people in the world today, we really didn't understand what God had truly given to the world. So he would call his name Jesus. Why did Jesus really come? Because as that baby in the manger, he was not yet ready to articulate or to speak plainly to you and I what his purpose was in the earth. Most babies, when they are born, they do not have a language that is coherent to you and I. They speak in baby speak. Amen. They gurgle and they Google and they do all the little things that make us smile and are so funny to us. For Jesus came into the world just like you and I did. Amen. But the purpose for which Jesus came into the world would not be revealed until 33 years later. Come on, somebody. And Jesus himself began to declare why he came into this world, even though he came in a way that most people would not receive him as someone great and beneficial in their life. Yeah. Jesus declared in the Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 4 and verse 18, he says, I have come to set the cap. I have come to set the captive free. We must understand that when our father Adam and our mother of the beginning Eve fell in the garden, we became captive to sin and to the dominion of Satan in the earth. We became children, not of God, but we became children of Satan, whether you want to believe that or not. Because upon the fall in the garden, Adam then abdicated his authority and abdicated the rule of man in the earth. And Satan became the prince of the air of this world. So everything we went about doing in life, we were kept. We were kept to Satan and his devices. 
See, it's one thing to understand that we roam freely in the world. You have a free will. God has given you free will and free choice. But you must understand, every person that is born into the world is led by a spirit. And if you have not been born again, if you have not been washed in the blood, if you have not been regenerated in your heart, amen, the spirit that leads man is the spirit of this world. The spirit of Satan. You are captive to the devil. There are many out here now who they're, they're going about and they're buying their Christmas gifts and they strung up their Christmas life. Amen. They're preparing for, for Christmas Day. Amen. But really many do not even have an understanding of the depth of what the original church intended when they put together and brought forth this concept, this idea of celebrating the birth. For they realized that many of those who said that they had believed on the Lord were still captive yet to the ways of this world. We've got to be careful. There's an old term that is used, that was used in generations past, and with the old saints who said, be careful that you don't straddle the fence. Amen. 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 That simply means a term that you really couldn't make up your mind which way you want to go, who you really want to serve, Amen. so you try to serve both of them and Lord of 
one day. The Lord is the Lord of every day. Because when the December 25th passes you by, I don't know about you, but I'm going to need the Lord on the 26th. I'm going to need the Lord on the 24th. And if the Lord allows, I'm going to need him on January 1st. So I don't need just to honor him on one day. I need to honor him every day of my life. For the song of God said, every day is a day of thanksgiving. For God has been so good to me. The psalmist says in Psalm 150, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Why did Jesus really come? He said, I came to seek and save that which was lost. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8, the apostle writes, he who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Can I get a witness? Amen. That while you and I were in our sins, the grace and mercy of God was working on our behalf Amen. because we were running with the devil not understanding who we were really running with. Amen. We were doing everything we thought was pleasing in our eyes. Amen. But really because we were not honoring God, we were really serving the devil. Amen. Because our sins were manifest in those things that we find in Galatians chapter 5 around verse 24. Amen. The manifestation of the work of the flesh. We did what we wanted to do and felt that nobody had a right to tell us what to do because that is the mind of the devil. Amen. The devil believed that while he was in heaven, it was good enough for him to honor and worship God. He believed that he could exceed God. He could elevate himself above Amen. God. And the Bible says that sin was found in the devil. Amen. It was before even creation that sin was found in the devil. So he was cast down to earth. The devil brought sin with him. Amen. And there in the garden, when he tempted Eve, and Eve fell to the temptation of the devil, yes. and then when she offered the forbidden fruit to her husband, Adam, who was with her, Adam was not tempted. Adam simply disobeyed. He realized what God had told him not to do, and he did it anyway. I heard someone say to me many years ago, but God is not about a lot of rules and regulations. Every do and every don't that God tells you and I is for our own good. It may seem like something like a rule and regulation, but how many know in this life we have rules and regulations every day of our life? There is an order that we must follow. God did not put his commandments or his statutes upon his people to be burdensome. He put them on him to free them and release them from their captivity. Amen. Says for this purpose. Because the devil has sinned. The devil had brought sin into the world. Jesus came that he might destroy the works of the devil. How many of you have ever had a broken heart? How many of you have ever been betrayed? How many of you have ever been misunderstood? How many of you have ever come to the point where you thought you ought to give it all up? Call somebody. You thought that life wasn't worth living because the devil had convinced you that you were no good and nothing good was going to come out of your life and that you couldn't turn your life around. But Jesus changed his name to destroy the works of the devil. But the Bible says, He has lied to so many and has destroyed so many. But Jesus came. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He tells his disciples there in John, amen, chapter 8 and verse 31. If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. See, 
The devil's lies will check you. The devil's lies will hold you down. The devil's lies will bind you up. But when you know the truth, there's not a lie from a demon in hell that can keep you down. Come on, somebody. I didn't know you're free this morning because Jesus came. In Matthew 5 and 17, Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Right. See, when we look at it too often, when we look at the scripture, and we study the scripture without understanding, yeah. without knowledge, we began to look at the law, amen, as a rigid thing that we must adhere to. Mm -hmm. But Paul says, the law was our taskmaster. Yeah. Can I break it down and make it easy? The Bible, he is saying, the law was your school teacher. Amen. The law was put in place to teach you what God said was right from wrong. The law was put in place to show you that you could not measure up to God's holy standard. Come on, somebody. Amen. That because God declared pureness and holiness out of all of us, yet our sins called us not to be able to fulfill the law. But when you look at the law, everything that God has ordained is his law. Yeah. You understand? Amen. Whatever God has said in his word is his law. Jesus said, I did not come to destroy the law. I came to fulfill it. Amen. In other words, whatever my father has told me to do, I didn't come to do away with anything that he said. I came to fulfill what he told me to do. Amen. See, that's what we must understand. Jesus came understanding the purpose for which he was here. Right. And we must be we must be thankful and we ought to praise him every day that Jesus came. Yes. He says in John 6 38, for I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of of him who sent me. Alright, we ought to be trying to think then. Yeah. What has the will of the one who sent him have to do with us? Wait a minute. We got to remember, he came to seek and save that which was lost. I don't know about you, but I was lost. Yes. Amen. I was lost. Yes. I was on my yes. way to hell. Yes. With the first class ticket yeah. and a private jet. Amen. Nobody was holding me back. Amen. And I didn't even know. Amen. Because I thought I was enjoying my sinful yeah. life. Because the Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a little while. Right. How many of us have ever lived in our sin and thought we were just having a good time? Yeah. But how many of us?
and many of the teachings in the church that all you got to do is get saved. And when you get saved, everything is going to be roses and candles. When you get saved, you're going to get everything that you ever wanted. No, the Lord said in this life, you're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. I, I must be preaching to myself right now. And I'm the only one that has had some ups and some downs. And I'm the only one that went to the road and the road gave out on me. And I'm the only one that was holding on to the road and got to the end of my road. Jesus said, but you got to understand, in order for me to do the will of him that sent me, yeah. hallelujah, yeah. something's going to happen. That's right. Right. Some of you might like it, yeah. and some of you won't. Right. See, because the understanding to those in Israel that when God was sent the Messiah, when he was sent the promised one, they were looking for someone like King David, a mighty ruler of a great army, a king of all nations to restore Israel to its former glory. But Jesus said, don't think that I have come to bring peace on this earth. I know the angels declare there on the mountainside for the shepherds of old. He says, For unto you is born this night in the city of David, city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes. And they said, Peace on earth, good will yeah. to all men. Yeah. But Jesus said, When my time comes, don't think I'm coming to bring peace. Amen. I didn't come to bring peace, but a soul. <laughs> Jesus said, when I really show up, when I grow up out of the manger, when you take me out of the little creek, yeah. and I become uh, the one that God has purposed me to be, I'm going to bring a soul. Amen. See, for so many today in this generation in which we live, especially the younger people, they may not understand the connotation and the identification and the significance of a sword. Because today, we don't do a uh, see a lot of fighting that's done with a sword. Amen. The fighting today is done most of the time with a gun. Right. Yeah. Am I right about it? Right. Yeah. But you must understand the idea and the concept, amen, of the sword, amen, can lend itself even to the gun. For when that bullet leaves that chamber and it begins to go out in space, whatever it hit, the sword separates, the bullet separates. Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace. I didn't come to bring everybody together. For when you when you preach this word, when you minister this right. word, when you teach right. this word, and the Holy Spirit truly ministers in the body of Christ, it's going to do a separating. Right. When it's carried out of the world, it's going to do a separating. Jesus said, I came to separate some yeah, folks right. for the glory of God. Amen. And when I speak, some folks are going to fall on the right side. Some folks are going to fall on the left side. Yeah. I've come to do a separation to show who really yeah. belongs yeah. to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Why did Jesus really come? Yeah. He didn't come, hallelujah, for us to have lights doing Christmas. He didn't come, amen, for us to have parades down the street. He came to seek and save that which was lost because we work. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He understood that there was a thief in the land. There's a thief in the midst of humanity. Amen. Anybody who knows or understands what a thief does. Yeah. A thief never means you any good. The thief comes to take that, amen, which is rightfully yours. See, in the beginning, our place was rightfully alongside God the Father. 
our place was in fellowship with God all the time. Amen. Amen. But the thief came in the midst to destroy our relationship with God. Amen. How many know the devil is jealous? The devil is angry. The devil is mad Amen. when you have a relationship That's with right. Jesus. Right. He doesn't care about you putting up your Christmas life. He doesn't care about all the gifts Amen. under your tree. He doesn't care about the expensive gifts that That's you right. buy. As long as you don't give God glory. As long as you don't lift up the name of That's Jesus. Right. I heard somebody say earlier, Jesus is the reason for this season. Yeah. But the thief doesn't care about that. That's right. For the thief only comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. That's right. <laughs> Mr. Kim, as I was meditating on that, even last night it came back and I began to ponder and look at that portion of scripture there in John 10, 10. And it said the thief comes not except to steal. Mm -hmm. And those are the times we say steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. But that's not what the scripture says. The scripture says the thief comes not except to steal and to kill and to destroy. The thief came into humanity, came into creation to get rid of all of us. That's right. He's not satisfied with just stealing a little of your joy. He's not satisfied Amen. with just killing a little Amen. of your happiness. He's not satisfied with just destroying some of your prosperity. He wants to take it all. with God. But because they strayed from God, the enemy came in and took away their anointing. It took away the glory of God in their midst. Okay. And they found themselves in captivity to another nation. They could not sing the glorious songs of worship and of praise. Just like today, amen, as we go into this third year of this thing called the pandemic, we are still in the midst of it. And because of it, the enemy has brought forth a spirit of fear into the world, into the nation, and even into the body of Christ. But I read where Paul writes to Timothy and said, God has not given his people a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Then he writes to the church, the Hebrew believers, and he tells them, don't forsake the assembling of yourself one with another. But here, we have allowed this thing to separate the body of Christ. Many have gotten so accustomed to turning the channel and seeing their favorite televangelist. I'm going to tell you right now. Donnie Lynch is not a televangelist. There is nothing. There is nothing. Like being in close fellowship with my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. And the enemy wants to bring in affliction. I read in the word of God that if any two touch and agree on any one thing in the name of Jesus. Remember he said he came to destroy the work of the devil. And fear is of the devil. The spirit of fear is of the devil. So if the devil has fear in your life, you better understand now, you need to get with somebody that you can touch and agree and pray with and begin to agree to beat the work of Satan in your life. Jesus came to set us free. The prophet said, one can put a thousand demons to flight. How many know that Satan has assigned, they has assigned demons to afflict you in your life? Amen. You don't believe that, do you? Yes. Oh, I know. We're, we're so educated. We're so intellectual now that we don't believe the things of the Spirit anymore. We don't believe the eternal things anymore. We only believe that what we can see, feel, touch, and smell. But the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not the things that we can touch. But they are mighty through God. You got a weapon at 
your disposal. Yes. It's called prayer. You got Amen. a weapon at your disposal. It's called faith. You got a weapon at your disposal. It's called prayer. But the psalmist said he will inhabit the praises of his people. So when you come in the house of God, you'll be coming in praising God that I made it another day. I made it another week. I made it another month. I made it another year. And if you made it in the last hour, you ought to be telling God, thank you. But the thief, I'm almost through. The thief has come. But when the thief came, the father said, son, now you need to go. There's a thief down there. And he's killing. He's still. He's destroyed. I need you to go and declare your presence in my creation. And Jesus said, the thief has come. The thief has shown up in your life. Somebody you know in the season of your life, he's been around you. He's shown up in your life. He tried to take you out. He tried to turn you down. He tried to kick you to the curb. But Jesus said, I come, I come that you might have life, but not just life, just to make it through. The life that I come to give you, you want to know why I showed up like I did in a manger? Yes. Don't you understand that the Father could have put all the power and glory in me in the manger. And you would have been amazed that this baby could have stood up in the manger, healed the sick, raised the dead, opened the blinded eye. But I had to go through the same things you did. Yes. To let you know that the God of creation is on your side. Yes. For the Bible says concerning the work of the priest. The priest of the Old Testament was the only one who was authorized to go into the Holy of Holies and stand before the presence of God <laughs> on behalf of the people. But the Bible says, now we have a high priest <laughs> who was tempted, who was tested, who went through just like you and I. He was touched with every infirmity that you and I had. He got hungry, he got thirsty, he got tired in his physical body. Yes. But said he was yet without sin. Yes. And now he sits on the right hand of the Father, yes. making intercession yes. for you and I. Because yes. some of us have been through some things yes. in our life yes. that were designed to destroy us. Some of us went through some things in our life that we didn't think we would make it this far. Some of us went through some things in our life that we didn't understand why things were happening to us like they were. It was the thief. But Jesus said, I came that you might have life. I want you to do more than just live and breathe air. I want you to do more than just go through the motions every day. I don't just want you just to get up and say, oh, another day, the same old, same old. No, I came to give you abundant life. I came to give it to you more abundantly. I came to give it to you so that when you wake up in the morning, you will sit, sit up and say, Lord, what have you got in store for me today? Hallelujah. I don't care if you got art on one side and right is on the other. Hallelujah. You say, Lord, Another day's journey you have brought me through. He said, I came that you might have life and that life more abundant. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. See, one of the things we forget is to look back over our life. Yes. And I'll be just as real as I can be. Many of us made some messed up choices. Yes. You might as well admit it. Tell the truth, Shane and the devil. We made some messed up choices. And those choices look like they were taking us downhill. But then Jesus came into our life. And can I get a witness right now? Jesus is the Lord 
other turn around. Won't he turn your life around? When he came in your life, won't he begin to fix it? Hallelujah. When he came into your life, won't he give you the all of joy from the God of the praise? Thank you, 
God. He didn't come to promise me that he was going to make me That's right. a bigger than him. That's right. But honestly, the Lord gives you every two that you need to become one. That's right. But since I'm not one, amen, I thank God that he's still taking care of me. That's right. Amen. Because right. guess what? That millionaire, when he woke up this morning, he had to breathe the same air that's that the right. Lord allowed me to breathe. Right. When he woke up this morning, yeah. the same one that caused the blood to run warm in his body caused the blood to that's run warm right. in my body. Right. Amen. When he woke up this morning, amen, the same one that allowed him to hear the birds sing, allowed me to hear the birds sing. I didn't have to pay a dime for it. I didn't have to put it on a credit card. Amen. I didn't put it on my way. It was already done. That we might have life and life more abundant. Amen. Stop wasting your abundant life yeah. with things and with folks. Amen. 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 That steal from you. I ain't talking about taking things from you. I'm talking about taking that precious gift of your joy, right. your peace, your gladness, your happiness. Don't let folks steal your smile. Yeah. Hallelujah. The psalmist of weeping may endure for a night. Amen. But you know what? We got the expectation of joy in the morning. Amen. Aren't you glad? Amen. I'm thankful right now. When I got the report that, that my brother or my friend had been in a car accident, I thank God I wasn't getting a call from his family saying that he was deceased. I can still speak to him one more time. When I look on your faces right now, I thank God that you aren't looking at me stretched out in a casket somewhere. Amen. I have a friend who said, you know, when I say, it's good to see you, and, and they'll say, well, it's good to be seen. That's right. Amen. Right. That's a bundle of life. Right. Hallelujah. Y'all be happy right now. Right. Amen. I, I don't expect to get a whole lot of gifts. I'm past that now. Right. But the Lord didn't allow me at my age to put one. Yeah. Yeah. He allowed me to raise my hand yeah. and to wave, to hug my children, to hug my wife. Amen. I'm thankful. Amen. Yeah. Abundant life. Yeah. Abundant life. Jesus said, I came that they might have life and have more abundant. Stand up. Stand up.
and even the kids that were powerful go out. But I didn't know I was powerful. Because as a child, I wasn't looking for a PlayStation 5. Amen. I wasn't looking for an iPhone 14.
every sinner who does not know you in the forgiveness of their sins right now. Lord, for your word says you are a long suffering God. It is not your desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance, to the knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ. So, Lord, I ask you to move by your Spirit in this season of our life. Lord, use us to be a light in darkness. Use us, Lord, to be salt in the midst of the earth. Use us, Lord, as a testimony to Jesus that's come and that he abides in me by his Holy Spirit. Lord, touch those under the sound of my voice. Touch those, Lord, by the way of social media. Touch wherever this word will go from. That someone, Lord, who's at the point of suicide will turn around. Someone, Lord, that may be over those long trouble will be delivered right now. Someone, Lord, who's at the point of giving up will see the look up to you. For you are the lifter of our heads. Lord, I ask you to bless right now. These two ministries, bless this great house of God. Bless, Father, my, your servant, your son, my, my friend, my brother, Bishop Lansley Williams. Bless this wonderful, loving wife, Lady Sharon. Bless this ministry, primarily for Christian fellowship, and all the work that you have appointed for the young people, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Those who are discouraged, those who are dismayed, yes, those who are given up, those who are without hope. You, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Use them. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, in this season where the people of God are honored, Thank Lord, you, Lord. remember the birth of our Savior. Yes. Thank you, Lord. May we once again declare. Yes, Lord. That He is Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Father. Is Lord. Thank you, Father. Living in love. Thank you, Jesus. Dying, He saved. Yes, Lord. Buried, He carried. Yes, Lord. Our sins fall away. Thank you, Jesus. Rising, He justifies. Yes, Lord. Freeing us forever. Thank but you, one Lord. day, one day, yes, Lord. you're coming back. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, for the glory of His name. Thank you, Lord. Bless these now, your people. Thank you, Father. As only you can. Thank you, Father.